The Supreme Court has rejected a Trump-backed lawsuit filed by the Texas Attorney General, which tried to block millions of votes in four key battleground states. And the justices decisively shut down the long-sought lawsuit to overturn the election that late Friday night. It's a court challenge that gained support from more than 100 Republicans in Congress and nearly two dozen Republican attorneys general. I want to talk about this and more with former federal prosecutor and CNN legal analyst Shan Wu. Shan, hope you're well. The president tweeting this morning, we've just begun to fight. So break it down for us. Does he actually have more options or is this SCOTUS ruling the end of the road? Uh, he has more options. Uh, SCOTUS is dealing with one case at a time, as they should. So they have slammed not one but two doors on Trump. He could try to get something else up there. But this latest one was relatively innovative for the bad lawyering that they've done trying to vote the interpretations. That didn't work. On the merits, they've just lost continuously. So it doesn't look like an indicator. We're having some trouble with Shan's feed, but let, let's try it again. You know, look, this happened so quickly without any dissents from the justices. Is there anything else that stood out about the court's order? Because they were clearly hoping the conservatives would come through. They weren't subtle about telegraphing that. Yeah, what stood out about the order was uh, the court focused on this attempted innovation of using their original jurisdiction. And they said, look, Texas does not have standing to bring this dispute against other states. Typically, what you see with the original jurisdiction is border disputes, water disputes, and the justices said, that's not here, that's not working here. And really, the Supreme Court, although they do have original jurisdiction between state disputes, this isn't typically that kind. They wouldn't know what to do with beginning a case like this because you have to do fact-finding. In those types of border disputes, water rights disputes, they usually have to farm it out to a special master. So the idea that Trump could just start bringing a bunch of cases in the Supreme Court challenging an election is just a non-starter. Well, especially after we've seen the record to date. I mean, what do you think of the lawyering his team has put forward to the Supreme Court and to all these district courts? Because a lot of folks said this didn't have a prayer, but it still had 17 attorneys generals sign on to it. Well, the fact that you have a lot of bad lawyering doesn't convert it into good lawyering. So that's really very weak arguments that, that they've made here. I mean, judge after judge, whether Republican appointed or Democratic appointed, has found no merits to their case. And this was no different than that. You know, I would note that Alito and Thomas did kind of weigh in with, frankly, with all due respect, a little bit of hot air as far as I'm concerned. They said that they would have found jurisdiction under the original jurisdiction theory, but they still would have ruled against it. Yeah, it's unnecessary to say. Either you think there's jurisdiction or there's not. There's no case for you to speculate on. So that was kind of gratuitous on their part, too. Well, you pointed out some ideological ironies in these cases. But, but again, I mean, these are some folks that you've worked with again. What does it say that so many state attorneys generals would give up or overlook not just ideology or standing, but to sign on to something like this, an attempt to overturn the election? Let's not sugarcoat yeah, it. Right. I mean, it's, it's really hypocritical on their part, because if you think about the typical conservative leaning towards states' rights, here you have one state trying to knock out the state rights of the other 49. <laughs> so, so it's very hypocritical. And, of course, Texas itself would have been involved in that. You'd have to look at whether they had violated their own theories about how the election should have run. Sure. So it, it's very hard to understand what their real thinking is, and there's really no legal merit to it whatsoever. Let's move up to Bill Barr, because President Trump has been teeing off on his attorney general. CNN just reporting that on Friday he discussed dismissing him. He's been retweeting things with similar suggestions. You know, he went after Attorney General Sessions. Barr has served him faithfully, but there are some lines he apparently will not cross. So with today, Trump today calling Barr a big disappointment, and with their relationship being described by a source to CNN as in a cold war, and Trump raising the prospect of firing Barr during a meeting yesterday, what do you think is the state of this relationship, and what do you think will play out before Inauguration Day? I think the state of the relationship is very poor. I mean, I, having worked at the Justice Department for an attorney general, I, you know, normally you don't have a whole lot of direct communication between the AG and the president anyway. In this instance, I don't know that they're even talking to each other. Barr just seems like he is laying low, and the idea that he's going to try and do something in these waning days is just kind of silly. I think he's just going to slink his way out of the Robert F. Kennedy building when the term is up. Trump could try to fire him, put in someone else, and, you know, the clock's just ticking. There is not much time 
to do anything. Even if Trump did install some lackey to be the next acting AG, I think he'd have a problem. I and mean, we've already seen career prosecutors resigning, ex-prosecutors, 2,000 of them saying Barr should resign. It's not going to make much headway in this Department of Justice in this tiny window left to them. Well, as we look at the radius of damage downstream from these kinds of actions, this almost near normalization of challenging and trying to overturn an election, what do you think an incoming Biden administration can do to help heal this breach, to help restore some of the trust in these institutions that has been so damaged? I think Biden has begun to do that by announcing, even in the obviously controversial issue of his own son's case, that he's going to be hands off, and that's the way it should be done. They need to let the world know that the Attorney General and the Justice Department are going to return to normalcy. They're going to be independent. The FBI is going to do its investigations on cases. The President's not going to have a direct line saying, do this, do that, making public announcements as to who they should prosecute. That's the first thing, is return to that normal state and tell the American people that we're returning to that normal state. Shen Wu, thank you very much. Good to see you.